few years later, when I was 13, another woman, a librarian, gave me another book. And I consider every good thing that ever happened to me since then a result of that woman handing me that book. I'd been wandering through the streets of the small Minnesota town we lived in one bitter winter evening, waiting for the drunks in the bars to get juiced. I sold newspapers, trying to scrape together a little money so that I could buy better clothes, believing, as kids do, that the right clothes might somehow lift me from my unpopular social life. And if I waited for the men who hung around in the bars to get a few drinks in them, I could hustle them for some extra change. I stopped in the library to warm up. The librarian noticed me, called me over, and asked me if I wanted a library card. Then she handed me a card with my name on it and gave me a book. Later that night, back at home, or what passed for home, a crummy apartment in the bad part of town, I took the book, a box of crackers, and a jar of grape jelly down to the basement to a hideaway I'd created behind the furnace where someone had abandoned a creaky old armchair under a bare light bulb. I sat in the corner, eating jelly-smothered crackers, plodding through the book. It took me forever to read. I was such a poor reader that by the time I'd finished a page, I'd forgotten what I'd even read read on the page before, and I'd have to go back. That first book must have taken me over a month to finish, hunched over the pages late at night. I wish I could remember the name of that first book. I can't even remember what it was about. What I do remember about that evening at the library what is that it marked the first of many nights that librarian would give me a book. Here, she'd say, handing me a few battered volumes. I think you'll like these. She would hand select books that she thought would interest me. Westerns, mysteries, survival tales, science fiction, Edgar Rice Burroughs. I would take them home to hide in the basement and read. I'd bring them back and we'd talk about them and she'd give me more books. But she wasn't just giving me books. She was giving me everything. She gave me the first hint I'd ever had in my entire life that there was something other than my awful parents screaming at each other in the kitchen. She handed me a world where I wasn't going to get beat up by the school bully. She showed me places where it didn't hurt all of the time. I read terribly at first, but as I did more of it, the books became more a part of me. And within a short time, they gave me a life, a life outside of myself that made me look forwards instead of backwards. Years later, after I'd graduated from high school, joined the army, gotten married, had children, and made a career as an electronics engineer working in a satellite, tracking books once again, changed my course of my life. This time though, I wrote the books. I was sitting in a satellite tracking station at about nine o'clock at night when suddenly I knew that I had to be a writer. In that instant, I gave up or lost everything that had made up my life until that point. My work, my family, certainly my earning potential. Writing had suddenly become everything, everything to me. I stood up from the console, handed in my security badge, and headed for Hollywood. I had to go to a place where I knew writers were. I had to be near them, had to learn from them. I got a job as a proofreader of a men's magazine, going from earning $500 a week to $400 a month, and apprenticed myself to a couple of the editors. These two men gave me writing assignments, and in order to continue receiving their help, I had to write an article, a chapter of a book, or a short story every night. Every single night, no exceptions. If I missed a single day, they wouldn't help me anymore. I had been writing for over, th over 30 years, 
spent most of it starving, trying to make it work for me, in my mind, trying to make words come together in the right patterns, movements, what some had called the loops and whirls of the story dance. And it always been hard. I think than I ever, move on. But I love writing more now, I think, than I ever have. The way the stories dance, the rhythms and the movements of them is so exciting to me. I remember the first acceptance letter, the first time a publisher told me that my writing was worthy of publication. The first after many rejections. There will never be another first one like this. Not first love, not first hope, nor first time never to feel like this. Dear author, we have decided to publish your book. Can you imagine your life, your work, your hopes, your thoughts, and your breath? We have decided to publish your book. We have decided to publish you. Such words thunder and burn in your mind and soul. Since then, I have written every day and I have told many stories. Stories of love and death and cold and heat and ice and flame. Stories sad and stories happy and stories of laughter and tears and places soft and hard of dogs and the white blink of Arctic ice. Story of great men and beautiful women and souls and devils and gods. Stories of lost dreams and found joys and aches and tortures and great rolling hills and towering storms and things quick and hot and slow and dull. Stories of graves and horses, pigs and kings, war and the times between wars. Stories of children's cheeks and the soft hair at a woman's temple. Stories of rage and spirit and spit and blood and bodies on fences and hay so sweet you could eat the grass. I write from my life, from what I see and what I hear and smell and feel, from personal inspection at zero altitude. And I write because it is simply all that I am. Because in the end, I do not want to do any other thing as much as I want to write. That wakes me up at night with story ideas, that makes the hair on the back of my neck go up when a story works, that causes my breath to stop and hold with a sentence that comes right and makes coming to the computer or a pad of paper every morning a feeling of wonderful newness and expectations, an engine that drives me to write. I personally just want two things. I want to write and I want as many young readers as possible to see what I write. That's it, to write and have readers. I work all the time. I get up at 4.30 in the morning. I meditate half an hour, and then I start working. Not always writing, but working. If I'm not writing, I read and I study and I write until I fall asleep at night. I owe everything I am.